Welcome back to True Crime PhD, I'm Trinity, and today we're going over some more detailed images from the Idaho 4 Brian Koberger case. I'm assuming this is an unredacted version. Passive drops and pools. Dominant pattern. The largest stain is a pool on the carpet directly in front of the table, with feathered edges indicating it spread from a single drip source rather than high-velocity impact. Smaller passive drips trail from the table edge to the floor, suggesting blood fell vertically from a height of two to three feet, consistent with a seated or kneeling source. Inference. This points to a low-energy bleeding event, like oozing from a wound rather than projection. Volume estimate. 50 to 100 milliliters based on pool size, enough for moderate arterial or venous bleeding, but not exsanguination. On the wall, a broad smear, about six inches wide, at approximately two feet high, with embedded fabric fibers from the pink material. Adjacent small voids, unstained areas, suggest something, e.g. a body part, was pressed against it. On the pink fabric, saturation with drag marks, as if it was used to staunch bleeding or wrapped around a wound. Inference, contact transfer from a bloody surface, skin, clothing, or hand, sliding or pressing against the wall and fabric indicates close-quarters struggle or victim attempting to steady themselves. Medium-velocity impact spatter, secondary pattern, fine droplets, 1 to 4 millimeters, on the wall and tabletop, with tails pointing downward and slightly outward, angle approximately 60 to 80 degrees from horizontal. Directionality, most spines, tails, converge toward the floor pool, suggesting origin from a point approximately 2 to 2.5 feet above the ground, offset 6 to 12 inches from the wall. No high-velocity mist, e.g. gunshot residue, or cast-off arcs visible. Inference. Likely from a blunt force or stab impact causing blood to atomize at 5 to 25 feet per second. Could be from a fist, elbow, or knife thrust dispersing blood on contact. No expirated or arterial spurts. Absent. No linear gush patterns or bubbling, indicative of coughing, breathing blood. Inference. Wound not involving major airways or high-pressure arteries like the carotid. Most likely, laceration or stab wound, medium velocity mechanism. The mix of passive pooling and impact spatter aligns with a sharp-edged or pointed implement example is a knife, broken glass, penetrating soft tissue, causing initial spurting followed by dripping. Torso or upper thigh, based on stain heights, 1 to 3 feet. A single deep laceration, 4 to 6 inches, could produce this volume without cast off. Alternative, blunt force trauma, e.g. repeated strikes with a heavy object, but less likely due to lack of linear cast off trails. Wound class, non-projectile, no gun-related mist, possibly defensive, smear patterns suggest victim raised arms dart hands. Severity, Moderate. Victims survived initial impact long enough to move. Smears indicate mobility, but lost significant blood. Pool size. No signs of prolonged struggle, e.g. widespread distribution. Victim positioning and movement. Initial position. Seated or kneeling against the wall, table, facing slightly away, toward the room center. The low wall stains and table drips suggest the body was slumped low, with the wound oriented downward, gravity-fed pooling. Sequence of events, victim positioned near table, perhaps sitting on floor, back to wall. Assault occurs, impact spatter hits, wall slash table, as blood ejects forward slash upward. Victim slumps or slides down, transfer smear on wall from shoulder slash arm, Pink fabric grabbed slash pressed to wound. Bleeding continues. Drips from elevated wound, e.g., if arm raised. Form pool on floor. Post-incident movement. Minimal. Stains are localized to a 3 by 3 foot area. Victim likely remained in place or crawled less than 1 foot drag on fabric. No trail away from scene. Body orientation. Prone or semi-prone. Chest down, at end. With head toward the cords right side of image. Height of stains rules out standing, would show higher projection. Time since incident seems based on the image, shows short time frame roughly a few hours based on no drying edges or skeletonization in pool. Environmental factors, 
carpet absorbs some blood, muting patterns, low light in image hides, UV reactive details, example luminol testing. Limitations. This is 2D photo analysis. 3D scanning or on-site measurement would refine angles. No DNA slash tools visible, but fabric could yield contact evidence.